study ice because it traps um, little samples of the ancient atmosphere. And um, we've only been studying the modern atmosphere really since the 1950s. Ice can go back uh, almost a million years. And so it gives us a long-term view of, of the atmospheric history. One of the major research sites that we've been working on is this place called Taylor Glacier in Antarctica, where old ice is actually flowing out uh, through the mountains and, and ends up at the surface where we can walk out there and collect as much as we want. And uh, that's really the reason to go to this site to get very, very large samples of old ice. We know from studies of ice cores that uh, C carbon dioxide concentrations go up during warm periods, down during cold periods. And precisely why, what the mechanisms are, has actually been a really major mystery for past climate change research uh, for, for many, many years. And what we've been doing with the big Taylor Glacier samples is, is studying the different forms of carbon. carbon 12 and carbon 13 are the most abundant forms of carbon in carbon dioxide. And the hope is that there would be a signature of why CO2 changes in these, the, the ratio of carbon 13 to carbon 12. We bring an entire analytical laboratory with us. So the, in addition to all the sampling, there'll be a couple of people uh, actually in a laboratory tent measuring some of the gases that we also measure here. And the reason we do that is we can't really look at the ice and say, aha, that's 20,000 years old. So we need to measure something to help us figure out where we are. The sequence of events for somebody going to this part of Antarctica is you, you fly to New Zealand, Christchurch, New Zealand, spend a day or two there, get on a military uh, transport plane that, that is uh, uh, chartered by the National Science Foundation, fly uh, between five and eight hours to McMurdo Station, land on the ice, uh, take a bus and you know all these things, get to McMurdo Station, spend about a a week there sorting out your gear, doing various safety trainings. And then to get to our site, uh, we take helicopters. It takes about an hour in a helicopter. Um, probably f about 20 flights to bring in all of our tents and food and gear. We spend maybe three to five days setting everything up, uh, getting all of our you know equipment going. And then finally, we work like crazy to collect uh, ice and uh, sometimes analyzing it on site, sometimes bringing it home. And um, it's beautiful, it's, it's a really fun place to be, but it is cold. In the, in the laboratory, our goal is to get the ancient air out of the ice uh, while not contaminating it with modern air or anything else. And exactly how we do that depends on the measurement we're going to make. But the general procedure is the ice sample is cut into the appropriate size piece in a, in a walk-in freezer in our lab. And then it's placed in some kind of a vacuum container where we can uh, pump away all of the laboratory air, just leaving the frozen ice. So we have to keep it cold and we have to pump away the air. And then, depending on what we're doing, we either warm the container and let the ice melt, 
or we mechanically uh, crush or, or, or so in some other way disaggregate the ice to release the air. At that point, um, we have various procedures to separate out the molecules that we're interested in measuring. We are changing the Earth system now, and the Earth system is going to respond to those, those changes. It's going to get warmer, and that warmth is going to trigger other processes. And we hope that by studying the past, we will see much more of the potential variability and processes that can go on on long time scales and, and get some sense of you know, how worried we, we should be and what we might expect to see happen in the future.